What up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here in New York City. I love this place, my favorite place to be. Her Majesty said to come to the IXDA conference. When she says jump, I jump. Follow that hot woman anywhere. Today we're gonna talk about predicates in JavaScript. Predicates are functions that return usually just true or false, and they're utilized for validating information. As we create pure functions, a lot of the burden on making sure that we return the same inputs ensures that the, our inputs that we actually get are legit. We have legit predicates that say, all right, all that data is good, I can give the same output. If you get some weird stuff in there, it's very hard to guarantee you're gonna give the same output. So we're gonna talk about that today. Now, part of satisfying rule number two here for pure functions is to ensure that if somebody gives the same input, you get the same output. It's very difficult to do that if you get some really bogus or strange data types that you weren't expecting. One of the ways that you can help ensure that that doesn't happen is if somebody forgets to give you something or you expect to have reasonable defaults, which are a good practice, you can use something called default parameters. Either everything has to be default or the ones to the right. You can't have defaults to the left and then parameters to the right that are required. So we're gonna make them all default for now. Default the name to default. Strength to one, the dexterity to one, the constitution to one. Now, when somebody actually calls this function with nothing in it, it gives them the default values. So you can ensure if somebody intentionally didn't pass values, they just want a default, or you can make the function easier to use and not have required things. Given that JavaScript doesn't have any strong typing or required parameters type of deal from a compiler perspective, this helps. And especially for very complex objects, Sometimes it's very often that the things that you want to change are at the front, such as the name, but other pieces of data that don't change often at the end. This is a great way to do that. You can also do it all the way down the line. So for example, we can provide the first parameter, but the other three will default. So now that cow is there, these are all default parameters, and we still have the internal logic working for there. And it works for everything else, except for the data types that are wrong. So for example, the one, if we provide a date here, it's still gonna give bogus information. It's gonna to try to coerce it to a string, and that's not so good. So how do you prevent, even though you've done the best you can to give default values, a programmer accidentally or intentionally giving you bogus data from a security perspective? Well, we saw that via predicate, so let's write our first predicate. We've gotta determine that this is in fact a string. Now, there's a variety of ways to deal with types in JavaScript, and they are all painful and very difficult to memorize. The people who say they aren't have nothing better to do and have memorized everything. For the rest of us, we would rather write higher level more concerns around our business. So we're going to use Lodash to cut down on a lot of that challenge. If you look at Lodash, go to lodash.com slash docs. It's a predicate library, it's a functional gateway library, and it's a series of array methods and things that deal with cross-browser compatibility issues. So you can use the same function and not worry how it works across node, browsers, what have you. We're interested in some of the base data type detection, such as is string, is number, is nan, finite, those kind of things. So we're going to install that library via npm. And if you don't have a package JSON, you do npm init dash y. It'll create one for you. Then we're going to do npm install lodash dash dash save, which will actually save automatically that, that library into the package JSON. So if we open the package JSON up, you'll see lodash is in there. We're good to go. When you check out this code later, you just have to run npm install and you have all the libraries you need. In this case, we're only using one for now. Creating a predicate is pretty straightforward. In this case, we need to validate that name is in fact a string. Is legit string. Now I use O for everything. It's when I have a series of a lot of predicates and you know that you're gonna have the same parameter over and over and over again. And given there's a lot of these guys, you wanna to try to keep them as concise as possible. So I'm not trying to say that you should be not writing verbose code. I think verbose code is wonderful. But in my case, I'm just writing O just because we know whatever I pass in, I don't know what this thing is. It's kind of like this mystery thing. And these predicates are, are supposed to validate that. Predicates are always supposed to return true or false. They are pure functions and they are not supposed to throw. True or false in throw is not binary. It's not yes or no. We're going for yes or no. We're going to use Lodash here and acquire it up top. And then we're going to say is string. O. Now, the problem with returning is string O is that it'll accept an empty string. And we don't want that for a name. We want at least one character. So we're going to say and and, which stands for and, use O is length greater than zero. Now, let's talk about this real quick. First off, this is not a function. This is an operator. Some of the 
base included operators are completely fine to use in JavaScript. And in fact, you'll notice that we don't detect if this is a string here, because we assume by the time it gets past this, it'll run this. If it's not a string, it won't even run this. It's called short circuiting. It basically just stops running additional ands if nothing past here passes to true. We can be sure by the time it reaches this point, it's a string. So let's test it out. We're gonna go to legit string and we're gonna log out some basic stuff. We'll get, yo, we've run that. We see that it is in fact true. If we run it with a number or a date, we know that it, the string yo is true, but the rest of them are false. So we know for a fact that those are legit. Now, if we run it with a blank string, it should also report false because we want a string that has at least one character. In this case, it has no characters. The length equates to zero, so it's not legit. Legit is slang for legitimate or good or something useful. That is our first predicate is a pure function that no matter what we throw at it, we offload most of the hard work to Lodash. Now, as you've seen, Lodash helps a lot with some of the baseline data types. You then build on top of that with functions that validate your inputs. So half of it is I expect this data type. The other half is the type of data that I think is acceptable. In our case, not an empty string, but something that has a length above. Now we're gonna get a little bit more advanced with numbers from this and start composing these predicates together in the next video. If you got any other questions, hit me up in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Tomorrow we're gonna to be playing with Dart and on Monday, I am gonna more advanced predicates around numbers and other data types and composing those things together. See you tomorrow.